do a slide about uh, a little bit about the zine maker, about me, um, what you can ex expect from this workshop. So yeah, I'm gonna start now. So um, so I'd like to do. I'm doing this workshop about the zine maker. And just experimenting with zines because it's something that um, is really important to me. Um, let me actually mute the mute Twitch. One sec. Yeah, because I keep hearing double speak. Anyway, so uh, yeah, so um, the zine maker is something that I've used um, to make a few zines actually. And I thought it would just be like a fun format for a workshop, um, just because, uh, just because it's I love zines so much. Um, they're something that's really special to me. So that's a little bit about me. Well, I'll start talking about me. So um, yeah, I'm Sabrina. I'm 26. I'm Afro Puerto Rican, Cuban, and an artist from the Bronx. And I use she her pronouns. And here's a picture of me with my zine, I'm a Magical Girl. So um, I've been making zines since 2019, which has been really fun. I actually learned how to do it in a workshop um, in New York. And since then I've made about like 30 zines, no big deal, right? And it's just something that I really love doing. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about my zines in a second, but um, here are some of my like the prints that I've done. Um, I like collaging. I like doing like um, relief printing. That's um, that's something I really enjoy doing. It's just like kind of using all kind of art mediums. And um, here are some of my zines. Let me just, yeah, that's the one, right one. Okay, um, so these are like, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven of my zines, um, that I really like. And yeah, like each zine is a little different when I make them. It just kind of depends on like what topics I'm interested in or like what topics I've been thinking about a lot. Um, and yeah, so I did a zine about chronic illness which is like cool for other spoonies like Karina and oh thanks Laura yeah um so I did Facebook is not my diary which is a zine I made of like me making fun of my college high, uh college Facebook statuses which is kind of funny like everybody likes that one and so, um, I'm a Magical Girl is, like, a zine that I made in the Electric Zine Maker and actually have it with me. I also have, uh, pictures on the side. Um, but, yeah, I made it in the Zine Maker and I just really like how I got to, like, manipulate the images, make them look weird. And, yeah, that's something that I really enjoy doing and also using, like, bright colors. So, um let's see what else um this is the inside of the um i'm a magical girl i kind of like did some collages of like animal crossing screenshots which is one of my favorite games and i like added text over it changed around the colors um this is the back cover which is actually an image that I drew I think like actually probably in like 2000 late 2019 and then I like manipulated with the zine maker as well so yeah it's a the zine maker is a really versatile program and um I forgot to credit the creator um well I have been on Twitter but I forgot to put it in the slides um, but the creator of the electric scene maker is um, Natalie Lawhead, and they're an awesome software and game developer and somebody that's really passionate about making fun experimental art tools. So yeah, like credit to credit to them because 
um it's just a really amazing program it's like once you really like start working with it a lot you can see like how much fun it is and even now so yeah um yeah like uh yeah there's the link again yeah I, I like colors too I keep checking the chat because like like I said, for some reason, it keeps hiding if I just kind of, like, have it off to the side. Um, okay, so, yeah. And also, like, to not ramble. Um, so, yeah, like, so I think um, we have, like, a mixed audience of people that make zines and uh, people that don't make zines. And, yeah, if you want to, like, say if you're, like, an artist, um not an artist in the chat, if you like making um, interesting experimental stuff, like, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, uh, for the people that don't know what a zine is, and I guess maybe, I don't know, not really refreshing for the people that do like me, since I've been making, like, zines for... Oh wow, it's at, yeah, it's it's uh two years now. Um, a zine is a self-published booklet. I kind of have a little spiel down already because um, usually I carry around my zines with me when I go out just to like give them to people. They're kind of like my business card because I've made a lot of them. Um, they're self-published booklets. Anybody can make them. I really like that, you know, you can just grab a pen and a paper, draw, draw on it, fold it, copy it, and then just give it to whoever. So, yeah, that's what really is the draw of zines to me, and the fact that you can make them about anything, and anybody can make them. So it's a very, like, egalitarian kind of art form. It's not, you don't need some special machine to make it or anything like that. But um, the question at hand right now is, how do you actually make a zine? And that is a very long-winded question. And uh, the presenter view has, like, all the text. But anyway, so first thing you th need to do when you're making a zine is to start with an idea, which is basically where everything comes from. It just starts with an idea that you're interested in. And then you just go with it. Um, so usually what I do when I make my zines is I either have an idea that's been bugging me for a while. Like, I don't know, something like, I don't know, I'm going to pick something random. Like, there's an ice cream truck outside my window. So I'm going to say, oh, like, you know, I really love ice cream trucks. Let me make a zine about, like, how much I love ice cream and ice cream trucks which is actually something that I've been wanting to do anyway. Um, but yeah, they're like, zines are a cool way to um, experiment. They're not costly unless you like want them to be, but I mean, paper and pen, like that's kind of like as like low tech as you can get in a way. So some ideas that you can use are like summer, your favorite food, crappy but fun poetry you know like everybody has their poetry that they wrote when they're a teenager and that's like a perfect kind of zine also I know that um there's a lot of people that they make zines about community issues so kind of like ways to get um food for like low-income people you can kind of make a zine about that give it to people spread it around um like, I also said, like, something you can keep, you keep thinking about, like, oh, like, I don't know, like, why, why, uh, like, you could talk, you can make a zine about weather, like, if you're obsessed with weather, like I am. <laughs> and also, another way you can think about zines is, like, how long you want it to be, do you want to share it with people, or you just want to, like, have a one-of-a-kind version, and, like, what do you want it to look like? So... Let me check the chat really quick. Ooh, you posted a zine, Laura. Oh, yeah. That's really cool. Okay. Yeah. I, 
think it's a uh, uh what do you call it? I think it's cool that um all y'all are like do kind of artsy creative stuff, but I mean like you know I like I like weird art in general too. <laughs> Corpse Brigader, um yeah I oh. I love, I love the, like, the mutual, like, art love in the chat. Um, okay. Yeah, weird art. That's what I'm all about. Um, okay. So, we're getting to the end of the slides. Um, I'm not done with the presentation, obviously, but, okay, so, um, yeah, also, like, kind of the thing to consider when you're making a zine, whether it's your first or, like, I don't know, second, third, whatever, is, um, like, what do you want it to look like? What do you want the feel to be? Like, what kind of, kind of, like, like, vibe do you want to give off? Like, so, let's see, I have, like, um, let's see if you can see it. Um, I'm a magical girl, and it's, like, very colorful, vibrant. Also, like, the video's on the delay, so I'm waiting for it to show up. <laughs> okay, yeah. Here it is. Okay, so, yeah, I mean, like, I think what's fun about it is that it's so colorful and, you know, like, the zine maker's fun about that. So, I'm gonna start uh, showing a tutorial how to do it. Did everybody, um, well, you know, how to use the zine maker? And I'm gonna, like, talk about what tools there are, kind of, like, what ways you can start a zine either if you haven't done one or if you just kind of like don't have ideas right now <laughs> or you just want to like see what kind of cool things the program can do because i love talking about it okay so one sec let me send a message to the admin because i want to have a notice of what's going on in the chat Okay, I am now. Alrighty, so I'm gonna open up the Zine Maker. Super excited. Okay, so let me open it up. Let's see, Zine Maker, where are you? Okay, here it is. Um, just a warning in case you like have any kind of, you know, like problems with uh like bright lights or something i would say like turn the brightness down on your screen <laughs> team weird art cool yeah turn the brightness down on your screen because the program is very like bright and fun and very colorful okay so i'm gonna start sharing my screen with the zine maker uh let's see how to do that Okay, scene maker. That's not it. Um, let's see what it's doing. Yeah, one sec. I'm still working on opening it. I think I'm actually going to try and start uh, streaming more on Twitch and, like, showing my art, which would be fun. So by then I'll have, like, a better handle on it. But, um, yeah, so I'm going to just, you know, like, share my whole screen because it doesn't want to do that for me, which is fine. No window capture. So how's everyone doing? Did, um... <clears throat> Hopefully everybody has their, their, um, the zine maker set up. I mean, you don't have to have it right now. Um, yeah, I'm going to do the display caption. Okay. Then there's like the weird 
you know, like, boy thingy there, but, so, I got the scene maker open, and as you can see, there's, um, a bunch of different types of formats, so there's the eight-page folded scene, which is, like, you know, a classic booklet with eight pages, um, so the cool thing is that you can save it as a PDF, so you can just print it as a booklet, and you don't have to, like, cut it, just kind of have to, like, fold it and, like, you know, like a sandwich, fold, like, a letter-sized piece of paper in half. So that's a cool basic format. That's what, um, I'm a Magical Girl is, uh, that's the format it's in. And if you're a zine maker that is more confident than I, or, um, has more time, there's a bunch of different formats. So there's the square accordion, that one actually sounds really cool, but it's 26 pages, so that's a little intense for me. Um, then there's the 16-page uh, micro mini, normal accordion, et cetera, et cetera. The Z fold is good if you don't have um, scissors and don't feel like, you know, like there's the, the classic like one-page zine where you kind of, I don't think I have one around here, but um, there's like the one page scene where it's like a piece of paper, you fold it in half, fold it in half, cut it, and then like fold it. So, but the cool thing is that um, in the in the folder that the zine maker gets downloaded in, it also has um, step by step ways to fold the zines. So even if you don't know how to do them, it'll show you how to do it. So. I'm going to open up an eight-page zine, um, and I'm going to experiment with some tools. Um, so let's go over, like, the main layout. So it has, like, each page. Um, it shows you where they are when you fold it, which is cool. Um, if you're a new zine maker, don't worry about that. Just go, like, page by page. So start with the front, then the inside front, page one, two, three, four, five and then the back. Alrighty, so I'm going to start showing y'all the tools. So there's all these fun icons, which may look a little overwhelming, um, but I'm going to show a little taste of them um, before y'all start making yours. So first thing you could do is like import an image. Um, I made a collage folder for the people that registered and also if you just want it um so i'm gonna import an image put it in here and then done so you got an image and um it's funny this one is actually made in kid pics which is another fun art tool that reminds me of this um so yeah i imported an image so there's like color fill, which is just, oh, I can't do the color fill because the color is already there. Um, there is, oh, you're zoomed in. Okay, one sec. One sec. That would be helpful. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> That's the thing about this program is that, like, it's a little surprising to me. Okay, so I, um, yeah, my helpful, um, streaming buddy is helping me troubleshoot stuff like that. So, yeah. So, how does it look so far? Hopefully it'll look, it'll look better now. Uh, so yeah. Okay, it looks great. Awesome. So I have this image here, and now what can I do with it? So there's a lot of things I can do with it. So I actually found this brush today that I really like. So it's called the soft brush, and you can do like these, this interesting like watercolor airbrush thing which is so pretty and 
it's a great way to start like making a background or adding to a background like this thing is that like it the longer you drag it the more like faint the um brush gets so it's kind of cool like that um some of the tools have pretty interesting effects like this one i've never seen something like this in an art program and if i don't like that i can undo it and it's gone okay so there's also a purlin brush which adds like this interesting glitchiness i'm not sure what that is but i like it <laughs> okay um undo that uh there is um custom ink which is just drawing with the ink brush it kind of has like this like spotty look to it um i also uh want to mention that a lot of the tools you can change the size so this is the bacon brush which is really cool um to me it kind of looks like toothpaste and it's cool for making backgrounds too which is something that i find hard as like a zine maker um then there's eggs <laughs> i don't know why but bacon and eggs i guess that makes like this kind of blobby looking thing and then um one of my favorite tools is the color factory which is probably not surprising if you like know that i like colorful stuff so what you can do with the color factory is that there's a few tools so there's color matrix which just changes the colors like totally so i think um the way it works is that there's like a grid of like the variations of color so i don't know i'll try and like i think the one is like on and the zero is off kind of like a uh, binary code that that just made it disappear okay that's fine so yeah that made it more pink because i guess because i took away the green um you can generate random which is cool if you don't like the color scheme but if you want if you like the image so there's like that yellow Ooh, that's kind of nice so i can apply that um convolution that looks really interesting and distorted um color transform i think this might be a little bit easier to like deal with to make cool effects like i really like that um but i think it's kind of like uh you know when you have 3d glasses but it just kind of like separates the colors anyway so the color factory is one of my favorite tools with this so what i'm gonna do is accept it and then if you really like an image that you make but you want to still do more on the page you can export the panel so when you click export panel it'll save it um i don't know i'll put like money money background too so yeah um okay so let's see what's going on with the twitch oh yeah the bacon brush does look make me look really hung uh make me feel hungry yeah so i think what i'm gonna do now is um i think maybe like if anybody wants to start making a zine if they have the program open they can like go ahead and start doing that and in the meanwhile i'm going to make a zine myself so you can see how i use the tools i think maybe um maybe in like i don't know 15 minutes we can like check in and like see how everyone's like doing with their zines if you feel like saying like how you're doing with it and oh thank you baby castles um thank you for the link of the zine maker again and also while i'm thinking about it i want to say thanks for baby castles to give uh giving me this opportunity to do this awesome workshop yeah the asci is like so rad because 
Okay, so I actually used it in the cover of the um of I'm a Magical Girl, which is awesome. Yeah, it has like the little like um, I think this is uh Wingdings, I think. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna do my own zine um just to like see how I'm like using the tools and also I'm gonna uh talk about like the process that I'm using in case you haven't made a zine before because honestly when I made my first zine it was pretty intimidating okay so let me close baby castles uh where is the zine maker it has the big z okay so I have this cool background and let's see let's get out of here let's go back to the menu so that's the front cover Okay, so, oh yeah, there's the text tool, so, which is amazing, so I can write the text here, say, um, let's see, I don't know, money, I don't know, retro money maybe, I don't know what the title's gonna be, usually like when I make my own zines, um, I usually do the title first. I don't know why, but that's the way I work is usually I use the cut do the cover first. Um yeah, so I made the text 70, size 70, 75 actually. And then they have all these fonts. I think they're the system fonts you have. So if you're like a font nerd, like I would like to be, um, you can go through like the fonts in your in your system. So I mean, this kind of looks retro to me, right? Yeah, it looks retro to me. Although the contrast is like, I don't know, I think the contrast is okay. Alrighty, so I'm done with that. Got uh, my title cover. Um, Only thing with the text is that like, it's not really movable easily. So if you mess up with it, you can just like get rid of it and then like redo it if you just want to do it. Um, okay, so, like, retro money, and then I'm gonna try the goldfish tool. It makes these weird, like, splotchy things. So that adds some, like, fun distortion to it. Um, I think that's actually how I did, um, part of the cover for I'm a Magical Girl. And then, like, I might distort the text a little bit. Actually, that's a little too distorted. I'm gonna undo that. Okay, that's good. I think it's fun. Also, you can change the size of it um, because I kind of want some like bigger ripples. So I'm going to say like 34. See, and it makes like a little bigger and it just looks really cool. And you can draw with it. Um, There's also like the splash. I think this is more, this is bigger than, um, the draw tool. Let's see how the chat's going. Okay. Yeah, nothing's happening with the chat. Cool. All right, so I got um I got my title. So I'm going to save and return to the menu. Okay. And you see like if you haven't made a zine when you do like a 8 page 8 um 8 page zine, it kind of gets like flipped over just because when you end up folding it it goes that way. Alrighty, so I'm gonna do page one. Alright, so I think what I can do first is I'll do like a color fill. Um I want to use the images that I got in the collage kit. So I'm gonna load the image as a pen texture. I've never done that so I'm a little bit scared but you know I'll see what happens. So I'm gonna use this uh this globe Let's see what happens. Oh. Huh. I think I have to make it bigger. Alright, so let's start over because I don't like that. Um, let's make it bigger. Huh. That's interesting. It makes a nice texture, right? Okay. Alright. So, let's see what's going on. How's everybody doing? <clears throat> yeah.
Yeah, it made like this weird swirly thing. I'm not really sure how the pen texture works, but it's cool. Um, so yeah, let me, after I check that, I'm gonna go back. I don't really like this, um, but you know, it kind of reminds me of money anyway, so I might like fill it in a little bit. Um, I'm also going to try doing like the smoosher. <laughs> Welcome to the smoosh zone. I love this. Smush your art for hobbies and professionals. So, let's see. Let's try the smusher. Alright. Oh, yeah. So, this is, like, makes, like, the swirly thing. It kind of, like, kind of drags the image, and then you can kind of bring it to wherever you want to, which is, it kind of makes some cool negative space. And it actually looks a little creepy, which, I mean, might go well with the theme of money. Um, so I'm going to smush this a little bit, just having fun, like, smushing it, which is all about the experimentation. Um, yeah, so I'm going to accept that. I think I want to add some images on top. Oh, there's a little skull and crossbones there. I'm going to click that, so I think this one, like, edits, it's kind of like filters, I think, so they have, like, bad half tones. So let's try this. Oh yeah, that looks awful. But I like how it kind of like lightened up the image. So yeah. Um, uh, let's see. I don't know any like um color hex codes, so I'm just gonna leave that alone. But they have a Netscape Navigator. <laughs> uh, let's see, Stucky. Um, the saturate and dither. That's actually kind of cool. This kind of looks like a horse. I don't know. I'm one of those people that'll see like, um, images and like random stuff. So, oh, that's punk punk at the aesthetic. Cool for like the theme makers that were around for the punk movement. Sketchy instant pixel art. Reduce colors. Oh, that's kind of nice. This, like, adds different color channels. Okie dokie, I like that one because it's uh, kind of soft looking. Um, okay, let's see. So I'm going to do the A-S-C-I-R. Uh, so let's try the blue-green because it's blue-green ish. So I'm going to try the alpha numeric and they have, um, you can put custom text in the ASCI paint. So I'm going to say hello world and hello money. I don't know why, but yeah. Okay. So let's be done with that and then oh no I didn't do anything with it oh I think you're supposed to like draw on here okay so yeah so it makes like a brush with the text which is fun and then I can fill up some of the white space on here yeah that's pretty cool it adds like a nice texture and it kind of gives me like y2k vibes I think Right? Yeah. Okie dokie. Let's see what else I can do. I think I'm kind of like satisfied with it. It looks very experimental. So I could do page two. Um, okay, let's add some more um, textures on here. I like the soft brush. I'm not sure where I'm really going with the scene, but I think. It's kind of like the fun in making a zine. Okay, so I'm using the soft brush because it makes like a really nice kind of watercolor marbly texture. And I got that blue down. I'm going to put a different blue. 
Um, yeah, got that. Kind of looks like glow sticks. Okay, that's looking kind of nice. All right, instead of talking to myself, um, I'm going to check the chat. Let's see. Yeah, I ended up using a little bit of the ASCII art. Okay. Uh, yeah, so let's see. I'm going to do a little bit more of the soft brush. Um, yeah, I hope everyone's like getting something out of this, like to just see kind of what the cool things you can do with this tool is. Okay, so that has kind of like a nice effect. And I'm gonna import an image. Okay, let's see. Um, okay, so I'm gonna put, um, I don't know, I'm gonna put these like this retro image of a uh, solitaire. Because for some reason, solitaire has to do with money. Or like gambling to me so let's put that and maybe we can manipulate that so let's see what i can do um let's smudge it i feel like kind of like play around with the edges i don't like that smudge it it kind of looks like water marbly I think it's like, like when I import images in um, Zine Maker, I like to kind of like smudge the edges a little bit just so it doesn't look like, you know, you just just like put it in there. Okay, I smudged that. Um, that's looking kind of cool and it looks very melty. Oh, let's see what blend in the pl displacer. I don't know what this is, but I'm. Let's see, maybe I can put the money back on again. Ooh, wow. That's awesome. I think this is kind of like, you know, the, um, like, layer masks in Photoshop, if you used that before. But this is actually, like, kind of cool. See, it's like, this is the image that I imported, and this is, like, what's on top. Well, underneath. I think that's cool. Let's see what else I can do. Darken, darken the difference. That looks really interesting. Hard light. I feel like this kind of looks more retro to me. Invert. That just really changed. Multiply, overlay. That looks really cool. Screen, subtract. Hmm. See what's the difference. Add and then subtract. Or add and screen. It kind of doesn't make the difference, but I think the screen looks nicer. So let's see. Save that. Um, I like this image also. Let's see. Page two. Alright, save and return to menu. So I got three pages down. That was pretty fast. Okay. How's everybody doing with this? It's almost an hour. Oh, but we started the stream a little early. Okay, okay. So, um, yeah. I wonder if, like, the screen is laggy or something. Let 
Virgil, go in the chat. Oh, cool. Ooh. Cool. Ooh, it's looking min minimalist in MS Painting. I think that's cool. Maybe once you start, like, playing around with it more and adding more layers, if you want to do that. I think it's just kind of fun to, uh, yeah, kind of, like, layer the images in here, especially because of all the cool tools. All right. Um, let's see. All right, it's getting close to four. Um, yeah, let's see. I think I'm going to try and finish up the pages a little bit, but hopefully everyone's, like, doing good with theirs. Um, like, Corpse, Corpse Brigadier. That's such a cool name. I also think minimalist is cool. It doesn't necessarily have to be really like in your face. So I'm going to do page three and let's try the pattern spray. That's actually another um tool that I like a lot. So I don't know, I'll do the pink and I'll put um put like a money sign. That looks very MS Painty. All right, so let's load this. Put the money sign. Wait, I messed it up a little bit. Hmm. Let's do like this purple and make the brush a little bit smaller. Let's see. Okay, got that. Um so for the spray you can do um random size, which is whoa. That's really heavy. Oh no, I messed it up. Wait, let's undo that. Guess I have to make a new stamp. Um, okay, let's try this. Oh, I think um because I had both of the settings on. So let's try random rotation. I think for the um spray tool it's kind of like you need to click on it rather than you know just drag it because it makes a pattern which is it's nice when you have like a solid background so i think maybe i'm gonna just like come back um kind of like put a little overlay of color fill oh yeah i can't do the color fill because it's not just a flat color but i'll work with that so let's see, um, I'm gonna try the purlin brush. Maybe add a little texture on here. And then I'm gonna see what happens if I use, ooh, that's interesting. And do a little like swirlies. And then, oh, I wanna try the glass stamps. These are cool. So it kind of looks like a marble almost. And you can see how it like changes between the um perlin texture and then the the blue fill. So yeah, it kind of it does make like a really nice um yeah, glass looking effect. So I think that's a cool background to work with. Um and then there's like different settings, how you can make the um Glass tool different. Let's accept that. And I guess before we finish up, I can try the pattern spray of the blue. That's actually the same blue. So I don't know, I can do pink. And that just makes us smudgy, but that's okay. Because we're experimenting. Um, yeah, so I'm going to try that now. Oh, that looks interesting. Kind of looks like pink cheese. I think that's good for now. It's a little, uh, little funky looking, but you know that's fine. So I'm gonna save it. Um, let's go back. Yeah, it does look like cheese. I don't. I think it's because the edges are blocky. Okay, let's see. All right, so it's three fifty two. Um, the workshop should go for an hour till four. Um, 
So let's see, let's talk about the export settings. So I have this, um, obviously I'm not done. Um, so there's um, the options that you can use to export your image or you can export your zine. So usually um, you can do two things. So you can export it as a PDF or a PNG. So each uh, type has a good uh, use for it. So the PDF is good if you want to do like a booklet, like um, like I'm a magical girl, like I keep showing, and I really like it. Um, but this one I saved it as a PDF, and so basically when it saves it as a PDF, it does like the sheet, so like the front sheet, inside sheet, blah blah blah. So basically, you print the PDF, and then it just you can print it as like a full eight and a half by eleven or whatever your standard size is. Or you could like print it as a booklet and then you also can export it as a PNG. Oh, it actually has the settings for the size. So you can save the PNG and then what you can do is you print it as one page. Wait, did I just close the zine maker? I think I just closed the zine maker. That's fine though. I can just open it up. Okay. Hopefully it saved it. Oh no, it did, it, I think it like totally deleted it, but it's fine. Um, yeah, so I was talking about the export settings. Um, so you can save it with the cut lines on the print if it's your first scene, and then you can actually see what you're doing. It might even be helpful for people that have made zines if you're doing one of the more complicated formats like the, I closed it again. Um. If you're doing the uh, the accordion zines, um, yeah, like this, this that's really complicated, and it actually shows the cut lines, which is really good because otherwise it's just very uh, confusing. But I feel like that might be a nice challenge for someone if they're bored of like you know the standard eight by eight eight uh. Standard eight page scene. Okay, yeah, that looks complicated. So, um, yeah, so the cut lines are definitely a helpful feature. Uh, and there's the how to fold it. It has it even with the little squares for each page, so it's less confusing. Um, and yeah, I think that's basically it for uh, explaining what you can do with the program and as um you all can see it's a really versatile program and uh i think it's definitely a great art tool if you're interested in any kind of experimenting um creating with art and yeah does anybody have questions that i can answer i'll answer any questions especially it's a, if it's about zine making or art <laughs> And also, um, if y'all would like to follow me on social media, um, I have right here. Um, you can find me on Instagram at Starly Art Studio. My Twitter is Starly Bree. And if you make a zine, or you made a zine today, or you make a zine in the future with the zine maker, feel free to tag me, which is starly art studio on instagram or starly brie on twitter or you could tag baby castles so we can show the community what um what kind of cool things you're making oh thanks thanks for the thanks for adding uh my instagram in the chat admin yeah but um i definitely like to say that this has like been such a great opportunity to do a really cool workshop Oh, that's okay, Laura. I I I know Laura, and I know that um, they're always making things. Yeah.
Can you put the Baby Castle's Twitter in the chat, please? Because I definitely like to see all the cool things um we make and oh yeah, the Discord is great too. That's actually how um I was able to know about <laughs> Oh your internet hates you. <laughs> yeah, um yeah the Discord for Baby Castles is wonderful. Um if y'all don't know, Baby Castles is a really cool experimental art space in New York City. Um, I'm based in New York City, um, well, the Bronx specifically, and I think it's just such an invaluable resource for the community, especially, you know, I feel like some art spaces, they're divided by, you know, like the artists, the poets, the computer people, the cooks but um or music makers and it's just kind of like a community that is really welcoming to like everybody and especially um you know it doesn't matter what kind of things you're into as long as you kind of like have a um an interest in making cool weird things which I kind of feel like baby castles is all about and yeah like if you really like this event um the admin just dropped uh, the donation for today's workshop in there so you can help spaces like this exist because um, art spaces like this are invaluable and especially now that uh, we've experienced a year of uh, pandemics it's interesting to have like you know the digital spaces and then the IRL spaces but I don't think they have to be separate I think it's kind of like cool when you have a little bit of everything in the community going on and yeah um so yeah i hope everybody enjoyed uh enjoyed this workshop um i'm trying to give more workshops so if anybody would like to have a zine or prints or just general creativity workshop um i'd love to do that and thanks so much, Admin. Thanks so much for helping me chat the chat. Um, yeah. Everyone at Baby Castles is really friendly. So if you're into any kind of creativity, art weirdness, silliness, just um being with other cool people, yeah, it's just a great space. And thanks so much, everyone. Oh, and thanks, Corp Brigadier. Yeah. I really, I'm glad you enjoyed it. All right. Bye, everyone. Let's see. Let's end the chat. Let's end the stream. Oh, thanks. Oh, y'all are so cute. Thank you. Have a great day. Yeah, and... I hope you all make like cool stuff with the um with the zine maker. Yeah. Bye.